Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Dennis Duko Nyala. I'm glad you're here today. If you're new, kindly subscribe. For those of you who've been asking me how or a video on how to actually grow sweet pepper, this is the day that the Lord has made. Behind me, as you can see, these are about six or five uh, greenhouses, all equally full or filled with sweet pepper. Today we want to understand where do, do you start from when you want to start a sweet pepper farm or a sweet pepper business? What are some of the challenges that are involved in sweet pepper? And with me I have a couple of you know wonderful men and perhaps women if we happen to find one that will be deliberating and sharing with us their experiences but most importantly sweet pepper as a business because on this channel the Duke's farm we all we want to understand is to empower people and also make them do farming as a business so that we can empower ourselves and empower our you know future our children as Africa to the world once again I'm glad you could follow me on uh, this particular channel please follow me also on different social media platforms and that was of course at Dennis Duke UG Instagram Twitter and Facebook see you shortly come with me and we experience this So guys, we are finally here. This is a greenhouse, man. It is very hot and in no minute we shall be, of course, going to have this interview at least from either outside or another compartment that is not too hot. But yes, I can feel the warmth. Welcome to my channel. Can we get to know who exactly you are? Uh, thank you very much. I'm Gideon Sempala. Uh, we have been doing this sweet pepper business. Uh, we got the idea from, I think he was a Pakistan man. Mm. So we started with the house, with one house. Mm. Uh, as time went on, uh, the business got a little bit uh, sweet, mm. as in terms of uh, the proceeds that we are getting uh, from the business. So we kept on adding uh, at least more houses. Uh, we added on two houses, then went to the third. Uh, so far, or oh, apparently, we have about uh, five houses. Mm. Uh, but uh, the business is really good mm. uh, because uh, a kilo for sweet peppers uh, it ranges from five thousand up to ten thousand, mm. uh, depending mm. on the market uh, de uh, forces of demand and supply. Uh, normally, people, most of the farmers uh, who are doing the sweet pepper business, they have about uh, one or two houses. Uh, because of uh, the cost implication in constructing the house. So when you, it gets you, uh, when you have a little bit more houses, uh, when uh, they're getting off season, for you, you are keeping on producing since you have a little bit more houses. Mm -hmm. So this makes the prices to shoot up if your fellow farmers are working only using two houses. Okay. Uh, sweet peppers are highly rich in uh, vitamin C. Uh, that's why the price is uh, a little bit high and it's normally uh, consumed in high-end uh, restaurants or hotels. Uh, it's consumption, uh, it's normally taken when it's raw. Uh, that's when uh, you get to benefit uh, from uh, the utmost values of uh, food values that you find in the sweet peppers. Okay, wonderful. That's a very nice uh, a snapshot of how beautiful and nutritious these sweet peppers are. Now, Mr. Gideon is going to take us through... So where do we start from? Uh, if you are to start a sweet pepper business, at least first and foremost, uh, you need to have uh, land. Uh, averagely, you can start with half an acre and above because uh, every house, uh, the dimension or the place it takes on the land, uh, for example, if it is half an acre, it, uh, it can accommodate at least about three houses. Each house, uh, in the sizing, it goes, uh, it is 8 meters by 26 meters. Uh, when it comes to feet, that is about 26 by 100. That is a house. So if you have a, a piece of land or a plot of land, if it is uh, 50 by 100, it means even the two houses can't what? Can't fit. So it needs at least when you have uh, like half an acre and above. So is it a must to grow green peppers in or rather sweet peppers in a greenhouse? Uh, yeah, it is a must because uh, when you grow these sweet peppers uh, in the open field, uh, normally uh, the grams, uh, they can grow, but normally the grams that are wanted on the market, uh, the, uh, a, a gram for each and every sweet pepper, 
ranges from 200 grams and above. Uh, so if you grow it outside in the open field, uh, you are getting uh, grams which are below per plantain. Uh, for example, if uh, maybe I may show you, uh, if we grow it outside, for example, this, uh, this outside, these are the sizes you will have. But if you grow, if you grow it inside, at least uh, the sizes are ranges, uh, at least you're supposed to have uh, at least like this size, and this uh, can be about uh, 200 grams. So if you grow outside, uh, business sense, you'll not make money because uh, the sizes will not be taken up on the market. So are there some sort of requirements that one should have before they start a green, uh, you know, a, a sweet pepper farming or sweet pepper farming? Uh, just like any other business, uh, at least uh, the most important thing uh, you need to have uh, or learn is falling into love with uh, something. You need to have the passion, uh, love for, for what you're going to do. Uh, this is a good business, but uh, you need at least to have uh, also uh, some finances because they're constructing the house. Uh, it doesn't take all that money, but it takes quite some, some little money because uh, constructing the house and finishing it, it can cost you between uh, uh, 15 to 20 million. Uh, it depends on the, on, the, on the supplier who is going to supply you the greenhouse. For example, if you go to, uh, to like companies like Agromax, a greenhouse, uh, uh, for example, like this unit, uh, which is 8 by 26 feet, it costs about 25 million. Uh, but uh, if uh, we want to understand uh, sweet pepper production, sweet pepper business, uh, sweet pepper farming, whatever you call it, and my lovely viewers out there want to know, where do you start from? Uh, as soon as uh, you're done with all the requirements, uh, you're finished uh, constructing the house or the greenhouse, uh, we, start, uh, we start by getting soil. Uh, we call it... Uh, you get the top black soil, uh, for example, like this. Uh, we normally get the soil from uh, forests. Uh, we call it virgin soil. Uh, we need this soil because uh, uh, it has taken long. It has all uh, the. Uh, it has all. Uh, it is still fertile. It, so when you get the soil, uh, you bring it on the farm. We normally buy this uh, this soil. Uh, a trip, uh, for example, a forward. For example, in a house, you need about. Uh, five cars of this soil, of, uh, of the forward. Uh, each trip goes for about, depending on the place where you are, normally the trip goes for about uh, 70,000. So that is about uh, 350,000. Uh, when you bring the soil onto the farm, uh, we have uh, where we cook or we, we burn this soil. Uh, this is uh, where we do the burning for the soil. Why we burn the soil? It is to kill the bacterial wilt uh, in the soil. Uh, we mix this soil with um, manure from uh, the cows. Uh, normally uh, we mix it with, uh, uh, with ready manure from, uh, for the cows or the cow dung. So when we are burning the soil, uh, we mix it uh, with manure, uh, basically to kill the bacterial wilt. Then after we pack this soil uh, into this black plastic bag. Uh, when we pack that soil into the uh, plastic bag, we, uh, we put directly into, into the house. Normally the house takes about uh, 1,300 uh, bags of this. So we, uh, this size of uh, 8 by 26, uh, it takes about uh, 1,300 uh, bags. Uh, when it comes uh, to planting, that is the plant, the, that's the plants or the total number of plants you'll have in the house. So uh, how do you plant them uh, in the greenhouse, first of all? Uh, normally, after uh, when we get the seeds, mm. uh, we normally plant them uh, into a nursery, which takes about two to three weeks. Uh, we don't plant the seeds here. Uh, the reason why we get a person who does uh, seed raising, who does the raising of the seeds for us, uh, because we we tried it in the first place, and uh, uh, all the seeds we didn't manage to raise all the seeds. So if you don't know how to raise the seeds properly. Uh, it is better you give them uh, to a seed raiser who can raise all the plantains and give you the seedling. Uh, it normally takes a uh, very little cost uh, raising the, the seedling because each seed is raised at uh, about uh, 100 shilling. So if you have about 1,000 plantain, that is about 100,000 shillings. Okay. 
Uh, so they get ready by three weeks? Uh, by three weeks uh, they are ready, so we do uh, transplant them uh, from uh, the, the trays uh, direct into the, into the greenhouse. Can you show us some of the recently done work? Okay, thank you. Uh, these ones, uh, we have uh, just uh, planted them. Uh, they have been here, I think, now for the, uh, uh, five days. Uh, when we get them uh, from, uh, uh, from the trays, uh, we plant directly into, into the plastic bags. Uh, these have been here for about five days. Uh, the other, the, the other um, these ones, uh, they have been here for now uh, a full month. So it normally, uh, if, you are to, if you are to start harvesting, after transplanting uh, from the nursery, it takes about uh, close to three months when you start harvesting. And when you start harvesting, it normally takes about uh, five months when you are doing uh, harvesting. For the first month, you harvest on full board, uh, then you relax about uh, three weeks, then uh, you, you harvest again. It normally takes uh, a break of about uh, three weeks uh, when you harvest for a full month. What do you mean by full board? Uh, full board, I mean, uh, if you are having 1,300 plantains here, you harvest for a full month, week in, week out. So when you finish harvesting for a full uh, month, uh, you, 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 you wait for like uh, three weeks to reharvest again. You said the green paper is ready within three months, right? Yeah. So during the course of three months, what does the farmer do? You, so you just plant and you leave it there? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, within, uh, when you have uh, planted uh, your plants within, inside, uh, normally the business, uh, this greenhouse, you don't need uh, very many uh, people to, do, to, to work inside because normally what we do, uh, we normally look at pruning. There is a stage where it reaches and we have to prune all this plantain. Uh, normally, uh, the, pl the pruning, it can take about two people to do the pruning of the whole house, and that can take about uh, almost two, two weeks. Uh, we do also uh, do use uh, uh, these, uh, wh when, the, when these plants uh, get uh, the sweet peppers, it gets heavy. Because if it, if it has about uh, five peppers, that is almost close to a kilo. So we, we use these strings uh, to support the plantain so that it doesn't break so that you don't make losses. Uh, we normally also do some spraying within. Uh, we put some fertilizers uh, inside the greenhouse in course when it is growing. Uh, we do also apply some uh, other manures. Uh, basically, uh, inside this house, the house is controlled. Uh, you have very minimal pests and diseases which attack the house. Uh, normally when the pests come through, uh, they are very simple pests uh, that uh, normally attack the greenhouse or the sweet peppers. Uh, the pests, uh, we can uh, have uh, snails that normally come in very cold weather. If we don't have any sun, snails uh, normally attack, uh, attack the, the house. Uh, we have also caterpillars normally which also attack the plantain. And we have thrips. But all those I've talked about, they are very easily manageable as long as uh, you do the spraying on time and uh, you know that uh, the house has been invaded. Uh, you don't need a lot of work inside here. It takes uh, simple work because you just need uh, to do irrigation. Uh, the irrigation system inside here, uh, we call it drip line irrigation. So every plantain, uh, there is a, a line running around. So you just need to open water in the morning as well as in the evening. Apparently on this stage, there is not much to do apart from irrigating the plantain uh, morning and evening. When they are produced, uh, it takes, uh, uh, the, the house takes about uh, 1,000 liters of uh, water per day. That is 500 liters in the morning, uh, 500 in the, v in the evening. But on this stage, on the early uh, days of planting, it takes about uh, 1,500 liters per, uh, in the morning, then 1,500 liters in the evening. Talk about uh, some of the challenges you have in this uh, sweet pepper business. Uh, the, the biggest challenge apparently that uh, we have been facing, it is uh, the quality of uh, the seeds that are on the market. Uh, because apparently uh, we have been buying seeds uh, from one of our suppliers 
uh, is one of the biggest suppliers in the country, but apparently his seeds are not doing very well. So if you buy uh, poor quality seeds, uh, it, affects, uh, it, uh, it affects the yields on the farm. And uh, in terms of uh, finances, uh, you don't get uh, uh, the, the, the required uh, outcome that you expect. Uh, the second challenge uh, that we normally face is uh, uh, the fluctuating prices. Uh, because at times uh, in this house the expected turnover, if you are expecting, uh, uh, if you have uh, 1,300 uh, 1, plantain, we are expecting between one and a half ton to two tons in the period of five months. Uh, so normally if it gets you when you are, you, you are you're on the higher side uh, of the prices, uh, you can get about, uh, that is average, you are looking at between seven uh, to ten million. Uh, in a period of five months of harvesting. So, <clears throat> for example, we have been hit with uh, the deadly virus, which is on, uh, so the kilos ranges between 4,000, because most of the people that are consuming the sweet peppers are not taking it. So apparently we are selling at 4,000. So those uh, fluctuations also affect uh, your expected uh, turnover in terms of uh, finances. Uh, the other challenge, uh, you can buy uh, uh, pesticides, that are expired so when you spray the, 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 the pesticides onto the crop you can lose the whole house uh, because uh, one of the time uh, you can find the debt is all okay but uh, since there are some of the, the suppliers of the pesticides are not genuine people uh, you can buy uh, pesticides which are expired and uh, it kills off the whole garden. Mm -hmm. uh, those are some of the few challenges uh, that we normally face okay. in the greenhouse crop. As a greenhouse farmer or as a uh sweet paper farmer. How do you make sure you increase uh, yields? Uh, increasing yields uh, is uh, first and foremost is, uh, is having a genuine supplier for, 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 for the seeds. If you get a genuine supplier who supplies you the right seeds, uh, that is the first. Uh, secondly, uh, we, we put one person per house uh, because uh, one person can totally look after this house uh, properly. If there is any simple disease outbreak, he can uh, properly uh, know that uh, there is an infection within the house and uh, we do the immediate, uh, uh, immediate word spraying. Uh, you also have to make sure that uh, since on this farm uh, we don't have electricity, we, we don't have uh, electricity, uh, uh, electricity hasn't yet uh, reached this side, so apparently we are using a solar pump. So there are times of uh, when the weather is a little bit uh, dull or when it is rainy, uh, you need at least to have a, a, a pump which uses generator so that you have continuous supply of water. Because if you don't have water on this, uh, in the greenhouse, you can, within two, three days, the whole garden is gone. So you need adequate and constant supply of water on the farm. Okay. Yes. There are a lot of uh, other business agriculture ventures that people go into. Why did you go into sweet pepper? Uh, sweet pepper, it is a very uh, lucrative uh, business uh, because uh, first and foremost, most of the people have big, big pieces or chunks of land and you can find uh, the, 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 the harvest he gets in all the big piece of land he has when it is very little money. Uh, but here we're having uh, one and a half acre, we have about uh, five houses. So if you're expecting uh, a turnover of uh, between seven to ten million, averagely uh, seven million. If you have, if you have about uh, five houses, that is about thirty-five million uh, in a period of five months. So in a year, you can have about a turnover of uh, between uh, thirty-five and uh, seventy million. So I find that uh, very lucrative. Even if you don't have a very big piece uh, piece of land, uh, it is a very good business. Okay. Uh, so you're trying to say that uh, sweet pepper growing or farming is a viable business. Uh, true, yeah, it is a very viable business uh, because uh, if you construct this house, uh, it can, uh, as I said earlier, that it takes about 15, 16 million up to 20. Uh, within a period of one and a half year, uh, return on investment is back. You, you, you are able to get what you injected into the business. So in the next years that come by, uh, you just need to, have do, to do simple things. Uh, whereby you don't need to invest uh, since it is a permanent structure. Uh, what we normally change it is the PVC uh, plastic that we normally change every after five or six years. 
and the PVC it, it costs about uh, 3.8 so the, 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 what you inject back to the business is very minimal so the return on investment uh, in the greenhouse uh, it's really a very viable business. There is a question, <clears throat> I know it's a bit uh, you know, vague and uh, uh, that farmers ask how much should I have before starting this business? Uh, just like any other business, I think uh, the first thing you should uh, have is passion. Uh, passion is, more, uh, is very important when you are to kickstart something. If you have the passion, then uh, we go to the finances. Uh, averagely, you need about uh, 16 million. Uh, even as uh, before we started the farm, I did save for about uh, three years before I started this house. After saving for three years, I had saved about uh, uh, six to seven million. Uh, then after I saw it, it was going to take me a very long period of time. Then I borrowed some money from the bank and uh, the first house, it costed us about 22 million. So that is how I started. So if you kick start and uh, you get to test on the, on the return on the investment, uh, you get obliged to construct more houses. So what you're trying to mean is the biggest cost is uh, spent on the greenhouse? Yes. Oh. So in a lifetime, how many are pieces or, 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 or stocks of uh, sweet pepper does one uh, plant a plantation, you said, or a, a one stock, or I don't know how to call it, but one can give you? Uh, in terms of yield uh, per plantain, uh, it can give you an average, uh, with the proper management, it can give you an average of two kilos in the whole spell of the uh, harvesting period. So if uh, you have about uh, average, uh, as I told you, 1,000 or 1,300. So every per, 1, per house, uh, per, per house, greenhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, that is about uh, 2,000 kilos. Okay. That is about uh, two tons. Okay. Of, uh, and each kilo is about uh, 6,000? Yes, average price is 5,000. Where is the market for sweet pepper? Uh, the market is very big. Uh, for example, for us, apparently, we are selling uh, to Nakasero. Uh, we sell to middlemen and uh, they take uh, the, the kilo on, uh, uh, on 5,000. But uh, when uh, you get to have more houses, for example, if I may say, I went to Javas and they told me they needed 80 kilos per day. So if we get more people to get into the business, uh, for example, different outgrowers, and uh, uh, because if you get a restaurant like Javas and you can supply them 80 kilos, they are willing to pay you 10,000 uh, per kilo. Since they buy from the middleman, is a genuine supplier to them since he can manage to supply the in the out. Okay. Yep. What's the difference? Uh, the difference is uh, uh, green pepper and sweet pepper. Uh, the difference is uh, the sweet peppers, uh, they normally, it ripens up and it, uh, it comes in color red or color yellow. It is normally eaten raw. Yes. What about but in terms of taste? it is in the test? same family. Yes. What about taste? Uh, the taste is uh, sweet as you hear the name sweet pepper. It is sweet. You can even eat it raw, fresh from the garden. Okay. Yes. So one of the most important things that I told you that I'll be doing is to bring you closer to people that are engaged in different agriculture ventures, just like we've heard from Gideon Sempa, who shared, who has shared rather a story, an inspiring story of how he started his uh, sweet pepper farming. And I'll be giving you, of course, a couple of people that are doing the same, sweet pepper, but I could also bring you a lot of other people uh, that are doing different agriculture ventures so that we can get inspired, we can get to learn and start doing agriculture as a business. For today, that's all I had for you. Dennis Ducornella is my name. If you want to visit uh, Sempala's, uh, rather Sempa's uh, uh, farm, you can reach me on those particular numbers on the screen so that you can get an opportunity of actually visiting. I'll share with you the contacts of his uh, or his contact so that you can call him as well and get to liars and learn come to the farm the most important thing that a farmer neglect is doing farm visits before they actually start their different business ventures their different agriculture ventures doing biz, uh, farm visits help you get exposed get help you get first-hand information you could do all the research on the internet get to understand from different people but getting it right from the source is very important so that's all i had for you today follow me on different social media platforms at dense duke ug until then it's a goodbye